Guys, this episode was going crazy. Oh my god, guys. I'll be popping bottles. Okay, I'm kidding. No, serious, no. This episode was going crazy. Very bombastic. Bombastic side eye. Criminal. I was going to just talk about the animation, but I have to do a little review. That last scene was amazing, how they did it with the ending playing. I knew something was gonna happen, but I didn't know Toji had a fucking gun out of nowhere. The episode was to solidify their relationship on Gojo and Geto, trying to make Rico's last couple of days as memorable and as much fun as possible. Rico's failings was showcased as the ocean, her wanting to be free, like the fishes. There's Nanami and this other guy's appearance. And then we got hit by a fucking bombshell, subverting everyone's expectations. Toji out of nowhere stabs Gojo. The fight was so fast paced because Gojo had to process everything that's happening right now. How did he get inside the barrier and Toji breaking Gojo's infinity barrier and then shit just hit the fan. But now animation time. This episode was directed and storyboarded by Naoki Miyajima which is his debut work who did a really good job conveying Riko's feelings about her not wanting to merge with Tengen and just wants to be free. There wasn't really much in the first half in terms of animation. Some great close ups over just exaggerated faces and poses. Kage Nashi, you love to see it. Also the art direction is just such an upgrade from the previous season and the compositing for the show as a whole. Nice character acting with the comedic art style changing. I love how exaggerated it is and this sequence was so well animated, directed and composited. Animated by Benjamin Faure, the reflection of the ocean slowly disappearing, the close-ups of her eye was so great and the fishes was all hand-drawn. I think the shark swimming past the camera looked really hard to draw. The perspective right and now the fight stab nice first person shot you can tell from this fight how much freedom besides time the animators had with the simpler designs and making the character just a blob at times toji bursting out of the curse was kind of yutapon cube-esque with the curse's skin or lumps of meat great effects and debris this sequence by kosuke kato great background animation like fucking amazing and making toji just lines conveying his Speed and how all over the place he is. Thank god the background wasn't CG. If this was season 1, this would have probably been CG, which will probably look shit, but you might never know. Still, his sequence, the background, speed lines, wind effects, heavy smearing, Canada's timing, and lines, every aspect combined making it so great. Again, background animation, this cut remind me of that Fire Force cut, I don't know why. Rotating shot, nothing noteworthy, but good. And here we go, Kenshi Watanabe's sequence. Just outright amazing. He usually doesn't do this type of cuts in Jujutsu Kaisen, he mainly does fast paced action, like what Kosuke Kato did. I mean, his effects is just amazing and the compositing helped too being great. Mixed of 2D and 3D debris, very loose movements on Gojo, all the buildings being destroyed looks great and using 3D backgrounds making this rotating shot possible, then changing back to 2D backgrounds. Hopefully we can see more Watanabe. Well, he is one of the main animators, so yeah. I know people are pissed off about the amount of dimming and ghosting this episode have, and also the last episode. To be honest, I don't really care, but yes, I can see why people are angry. The curses or bugs were all hand-drawn. I mean, all the curses were all 2D in season 1, but the amount of curses here, there's so much. This whole sequence until the transition to Ghetto and Rico going to the Star Plasma was animated by Yoto? Yoto. I'm just butchering everyone's names. Nice smears on the hand. This perspective shot was also great. I don't know what type of smears this is. It's blurry. Very interesting. The effects for this, some red dot sparks, I guess. Speed lines, the color also green, then turning into yellow. And the impact frame showing that Toji broke through Gojo's infinity barrier. Again, the compositing is great. The impact on the stab with the blood probably should have hold on to the stab a bit more to, I guess, convey the impact better. But it's still good. The eyes are all white, making him look more crazy. Again, this cut is dim. Can't really do anything about it. This cut conveyed the impact really well with thicker line and at the end with some nice debris accompanying that. Now I understand why Sukuna was interested in Megumi. I mean his dad was a problem. Moving on to Rico and Geto scenes. Great character acting in this part. Still artist unknown and Geto's subtle character expressions that Geto actually cared about Rico. Again with the metaphor expressing Rico's feelings not wanting to be alone and to spend time with the people she cares about. Great direction for this scene. And then <laughs> Again, subtle character acting. God damn, his muscles are just 
poking out so much. You can see the shocked on Ghetto's face and the smile by Toji. I love how the curses enter the scene. You can see the minimal compositing, not the overly composite curses in season 1. Transitioning with the dragon moving forward, a bit accompanied by his mirrors. The detail on the dragon is so fucking good. Also, there's some like gradient purple added on and this final cut the messy line art the character acting kind of remind me of yuta from jujutsu kaisen zero that one scene i forgot i'll probably find it and yeah very great episode with some great animators working on it people thought kencho watanabe was going to direct and storyboard this episode it's just so easy to lie that's probably it i'm gonna do the next episode too because it's probably gonna be amazing and also for some people don't have too much expectations it's not gonna be a chainsaw man where, where every scene is just sakuga you gotta factor in how much time they had which is probably around a year but they have six or seven months more because of the show airing of course i'm not saying Jujutsu kaisen will be bad looking like some other mappa show it'll still look really fucking good because of the amount of animators and talented staff members in the show yeah if you guys like this video leave a like if you hate it leave a like comment down below how sexy kid gojo is comment down below what your thoughts on the episode this analysis was probably a bit short but i'm not gonna go to very detail about it there's probably some other channels go very very detailed about it and yeah if you guys enjoyed this video see you guys next time